Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word. We continue Solomon's Proverbs with chapters 19 and 20 today, verse 23 of chapter 19. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. Now, as we read these chapters, notice that several Proverbs address the negative later with a positive or the opposite. For instance, we see in verse 7 the rejection of the poor with the proper response actually shown in verse 17. So we're going to see uh, several of those uh, throughout uh, this chapter and the next. Verse 1, chapter 19. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than one who is perverse in his lips and is a fool. You know, integrity will bring more value to your life than riches. Verse 2. Also, it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge, and he who sins, and he sins who hastens with his feet. The foolishness of a man twists his way, and his heart frets against the Lord. Knowledge provides direction and discretion, which prevents, it's a preventative to failure. It doesn't mean you won't fail, but you're destined to fail if you reject direction and you have no discretion. However, and what we see here is the foolish person moves forward without thinking through a situation. They don't think about a situation. They just move forward, and then they blame God when it fails. Verse 5, a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies will not escape. Now look also at verse 9, a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies shall perish. Look, here's the bottom line, your sin will find you out, all right? Um, you, can, you can run, but you cannot hide from the justice of God. Verse 7, all the brothers of the poor hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He may pursue them with words, yet they abandon him. Now, this is what I was talking about. Look later, and you see the positive. What should be the response? Look at verse 17. Now, this is a different Hebrew word for poor, incorporating more than just the material poverty, but also being weak and needy. Verse 17, he who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. The Lord is concerned about the weak and the needy, and so should we. We'll also see in here God's economy. We're going to see more about that, that when we operate in God's economy, meaning that we realize that God is the one who provides for us, as Genesis says, God is the one who gives us the ability to gain wealth. Well, here, as we operate in, in helping others, giving to others, we do so knowing that God is the one who repays us. Verse 19, the discretion of a man makes him slow to anger, and his glory is to overlook a transgression. This is a mark of both spiritual and emotional maturity, controlling our emotions and our reactions to others. Verse 13, a foolish son is the ruin of his father, and the contingents of a wife are a continual dripping. Verse 14, houses and riches are inheritance from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Now, this thought continues over into verse 18. Chasten your son while there is hope. Do not set your heart on his destruction. So, taking these verses, these three verses together, a man does well to seek a godly wife, which is from the Lord. And, of course, that goes for women as well, seeking a godly husband from the Lord. Then, once they seek for that godly mate and they find them, because those things are from the Lord, then they should focus on raising their children because neglecting to do either can lead to a lifelong misery. Now, if, we, if you don't seek the right spouse, if you don't raise your children right in the fear and admonition of the Lord, it, it comes back, all right? For young or yet to be parents, okay? This means family and children, right? are you listening? Above career. I don't let that sink in for a moment because we, you know, we're all about career and that's important. You, you got to provide for your family, but someone's got to raise the kids, all right? Do not outsource the raising and instruction of your children to a godless system. If you do, then you should not be surprised when you have foolish children, all right? I'm going to talk a lot about that on this journey because the Bible talks a lot about that. Verse 15, laziness cast one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. You know, as we've seen in Proverbs, it has a lot to say about working. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians 3.10, 
For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. All right, there's a connection between eating and working. Verse 16, he who keeps the commandment keeps his soul, but he who is careless of his ways will die. There are consequences for lawless and godless living, even in this life. Verse 19, a man of great wealth will suffer punishment. Uh, I'm sorry, let me read that again. A man of great wrath will suffer punishment. For if you rescue him, you'll have to do it again. Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. Listening and receiving instruction is a hard attitude that will pay lifelong dividends. Verse 21, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. So what should we do? Seek the Lord, which leads us then to verse 23. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. The fear of the Lord, okay, this is not this dread, the shaking, quaking, uh, that God's going to strike us with a lightning bolt if we step out of line. Fear of the Lord means reverence, which means obedience. Reverence leads to obedience. If we reverence God, if we honor God, we're going to obey Him. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Verse 24, a lazy man buries his hand in the bowl and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. This is Proverbs, written thousands of years ago. There's nothing new under the sun. Verse 25, strike a scoffer and the simple will become wary. Rebuke one who has understanding and he will discern knowledge. Punishment has a deterring effect, okay? That's really what punishment is about. Verse 26, verse 19, He who mistreats his father and chases away his mother is a son who calls a shame and brings reproach. Truly, that is shameful for a, a son to chase away his mother. All right. Uh, verse 27, Cease listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. Right, if you won't listen, if you won't take instruction and correction, all right, you're in trouble. Verse 29, judgments are prepared for scoffers and beatings for the backs of fools. You know, punishment is all that's left for those who reject instruction and correction. And of course, that punishment speaks to others as a warning. Verse 3 of chapter 20, it is honorable for a man to stop striving since any fool can start a quarrel. It takes two to tango, so just stop. Verse 4, the lazy man will not plow because of winter. He will beg during harvest and have nothing. Procrastination because of unfavorable conditions leads to poverty. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. You, you just have to do it. You have to, you have to work. All right, we've got to get up and do what needs to be done. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Intentions are sometimes hidden deep within the heart, but a wise and discerning person can draw that out just by conversation. Verse 6, most men will proclaim each his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. A righteous man walks in integrity because he knows life is more than about just his pleasure and his desire. A faithful man who operates in righteousness is not self-consumed and absorbed. Verse 8, a king who sits on the throne of judgment scatters all evil with his eyes. Good government ensures justice, which then restrains lawlessness. Verse 9, who can say, I've made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin? The answer, no one. Verse 10 could be related from the standpoint of using a false standard to measure our lives and behavior. Look at verse 10, diverse weights diverse measures, they are both alike an abomination to the Lord. The measurement is the Word of God, which is truth. Verse 11, even a child is known by his deeds, whether what he does is pure and right. You know, building a reputation starts early, and it is a lifelong endeavor. Don't blow it. Verse 12, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made them both. Use them then for the Creator's purposes. Verse 13, do not love sleep lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes and you will be satisfied with bread. Again, talking about laziness. 
Verse 15, there is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Having and sharing true knowledge is of great value. Verse 17, bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be filled with gravel. Sin may be pleasant in the moment of commission, but it will soon lead to grief and to sorrow. Verse 18, plans are established by counsel, by wise counsel wage war. Diligence, planning, and counsel. Verse 19, he who goes about as a tale bearer reveals secrets, therefore do not associate with one who flatters with his lips. Loose lips sink ships. Be careful what you entrust to others. Whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in deep darkness. Their life, is what it's saying, will be snuffed out, whether literally or figuratively. Verse 22, do not say, I will recompense evil. Wait for the Lord and he will save you. We are not to give evil for evil for personal offenses. Those who offend us, we should not strike back. We look to the Lord. Now, there are times when we must stand against the evil that others do, which may be pushing back on that, but it's not for ourselves. Verse 23, diverse weights are an abomination to the Lord, and dishonest scales are not good. Again, this is talking about just weights. This, I believe, is referring to economic honesty. And this is something that actually government has a responsibility in to ensure that we have economic honesty. That is how businesses transact with people. That's why you see, um, for instance, the, you'll see stickers on gas pumps to ensure that the measurement is accurate. But government also needs to operate according to economic honesty. honesty. And that includes their monetary policy and, and uh, how they are monetizing debt, inflation, that is not necessarily operating according to economic, uh, honest, honest economic principles. All right, let's move on. Verse 24, a man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? Well, this is why we must commit our way to the Lord, as Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. And, and that is how we Understand our way as if we yield to the Lord. Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your steps. Verse 26, a wise king sifts out the wicked and brings the threshing wheel over them. I have to believe this is verse connected to verse 8 about justice and truth. Verse 27, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord searching all the inner depths of his heart. This is what distinguishes man from the rest of creation. Man's conscience is the light, that's the soul, the light of God with every person in their inner being bearing the image of God and the capacity to be in relationship with and to know God. This is why we see this effort to put you know, animals and humans together. They're not the same. We have a soul which bears the image of God, which gives us the capacity to be in relationship with Him. Verse 28, mercy and truth preserve the king and by loving kindness, he upholds his throne. Again, the qualities of good government, truth and mercy. Verse 30, blows that hurt cleanse away evil, as do stripes the inner depths of the heart. Once again, for those who reject correction, only punishment is left. Father, we thank you once again for your word. And uh, Lord, just uh, amazing wisdom to be gained through the Proverbs, through, through your word especially here, Lord, as we read through the Proverbs in such practical application. May our hearts be open to the truths that the Holy Spirit is showing us on this journey. And may we apply them to our lives. May we not just hear them. And may we not just be struck by the, uh, by the wisdom contained herein, but Lord, may we apply it to our lives. That, Lord, we might be a testimony to your truth to those round about us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks for being with me this morning. Until next time, keep standing on the Word.